Okay, so we're starting out the new year, and I committed myself to making one new piece of content weekly throughout the year, and I may do more than that, but we'll see what comes. Uh, this is going to be the first one. So content might be uh, a video, it might be a podcast, it might be an article, and maybe I'll turn that article into a podcast or a video. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But the point is, I want to start putting more stuff out there, and I'm committing myself to this because... Uh, I think it's going to motivate me. It's going to get a lot of the ideas that I've had floating around in my head out uh, so people can hear them and consume them. And mostly, I just want to, you know, I want to I want to leave something behind, too. So, you know, a lot of what we do in, in my community and my profession is it's intangible. You know, we talk to people and uh, they come into the office and we help them and they say thanks and then they leave and we never hear from them again. And you you look back over the course of your career and you, (laughs) how many people did I help? I don't really know, but at least, you know, if I'm putting out content uh, in the form of published materials, whether it be self-published on YouTube or maybe I'll write a book one of these days, I don't know, you know, published by somebody else, I can at least point back and be like, Oh, I did something right. I left something behind and, and with impressions and, you know, data tracking and all that, I can say, well, I I touched, several hundred people or something like that. So that's this, you know, it's kind of my own, um, my own desire to, to mark my progress in the world. And, um, you know, I hope, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope somebody maybe gets inspired to do something similar. So today's topic happens to be on gratitude. Uh, I don't know, there's a fight this morning with the kids and uh, little Ethan, who's, um, who's in one of my other videos, or a couple of them, actually, he's now four and a half. And he was thrown a fit because he didn't get to pick the television show that they watched this morning. And, uh, I, I was, I was upset. I, I yelled at him and I said, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. You, you need to, you need to learn to be grateful that you even have TV streaming on demand to pick and a brother to fight with. Cause a lot of kids don't have those things. And I'm trying to create a perspective for my children that, um, that instills some gratitude and appreciation. And the example I used with him, I said, you know, I'm going to go get my haircut today. Uh, it's not yet. This is pre haircut, and this is this is actually quite long. But I said uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get my haircut today, and I'm grateful that I have money to get my haircut because there was a time in my life when I didn't, and uh, a long time in my life actually. And so I am very very grateful that I have money not only to get my own haircut but my kid's haircut and uh, and my wife and women's hair is more expensive to cut. Apparently, I don't know if it's like thicker and they need different tools or like using like wire strippers or something. But I, I don't, I don't understand, uh, why women's haircuts are like four to eight times the price of a, of a men's haircut. But, but that being the case, um, we do have the resources and I'm, I'm incredibly thankful to, to, to be in a position where we can do that, you know, on a, on a monthly or every five to six week basis. And, and that got me thinking about some other things. Now, I've said on, on podcasts and, uh, and different seminars and, and uh, different places where I present that I'm incredibly blessed to draw my salary from Zephyr Wellness. So I have a team of employees here that all generate my income. Uh, I don't have to slug it out, you know, 35 client hours a week, uh, you know, seeing patients uh, all day every day, daily. And if I take time off work, then that inherently means a dent in my, in my pocketbook, you know? So, uh, it it gives me the, the latitude, the freedom to go out and do things like this and to participate in several community organizations and, uh, do some leadership things, uh, work with walk the talk America, for example, if you don't know about walk the talk America, go to WTTA.org. It's a, it's an organization that's trying to bring the firearms community and the mental health community together to prevent suicide. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of that stuff. And I'm, I'm really humbled and grateful that my income is generated by people other than me. And I, I, I don't know too many people in the, in the planet who can say that. And so I want to, I want to honor that. And I want, I never want to take it for granted. Uh, the fact that I have a, a microphone here, you know, connected to a, a sound board and I've got a, this fancy Logitech camera that, uh, you know, hooks into my computer and, and I can do this. Like, this is a lot of resources. You know, it's it's a lot of stuff that not too long ago, uh, long before Zephyr Wellness, which we were coming up on seven years now, but before Zephyr existed, uh, I didn't have resources. Uh, uh, the, the, the thought of buying a new anything uh, even if it was a new, you know, new tires for my car, that crossed my mind the other day. Um, it was it was a struggle because I I wasn't making good money, and uh, part of that was, 
you know, I wasn't making good money with college degrees, multiple. And uh, I, I'm just, I just always want to make sure that I'm, I'm checking in on not being, um, that I'm not taking for granted the things that I have in my life. I look around my office, for example, I got these fancy little, little, uh, you know, sound bafflers on the wall that, you know, they're, they're like a dollar a piece or something. If you buy them on, on Amazon or something, two bucks maybe, but that was a purchase I never would have made 10 years ago. Like never, ever. That was, that was superfluous. That was fluff. And, um, and I want to make sure that I retain that perspective. So the reason I'm doing this is I want to invite you guys who are watching this to retain the same perspective. And, and here's why I've found through my life that being grateful for little things like, you know, dollar a piece sound bafflers, um, is not only humbling and, and being humble is very good because it opens you up to new, new concepts, new information, uh, growth potential, um, new relationships. And, uh, and it alleviates a lot of the desire for, for rigid certainty. But, but what gratitude also does is it, it mentally pivots a person's viewpoint away from entitlement and toward hard work, um, a, a one down position to, to everybody else. And, and, it, and it reshifts your perspectives. Now, so, so here, what's, what's wrong with entitlement? Well, I don't like entitlement because when we have a sense of entitlement, what it says inherently to, to ourself is, I need, I deserve. Um, and when I don't get those things that I think I need and deserve, and I'm talking material possessions here, not like I need air to breathe. That's, of course, you're entitled to air to breathe. But, you know, material possessions that you don't necessarily need, it's just more of a want. When we get so fixated on being entitled to get stuff, we end up throwing a fit when we don't get it. Because what we've, what we've told ourselves is, I cannot tolerate this distress of not getting it. Very much like Ethan did this morning. It's our fault as parents that we've conditioned him to believing that he gets to choose his uh, TV show every morning. It's our fault as parents to, that we conditioned him to even think that there is TV every morning. Um, and there's nothing wrong with TV every morning. You know, we, we, uh, we spend about a half hour watching Wild Kratz, which is a great show for those of you who have kids and, and uh, need something to s- stick them in front of. Wild Kratz is a fantastic animal show. Um, it's on PBS uh, for, for kids. But the idea is that we've, we've pushed into his little psyche, his, his, little, his little noggin, that he deserves this thing every day. And when he doesn't get it, he's going he's gonna to freak out. So it's also our fault that we haven't taught him distress tolerance and say it's okay to, to be told no. It's okay not to get certain things. Now, why is all this important? Well, ultimately, we're all supposed to live in community. And if we're looking externally, meaning we're, we're looking to others, the television, the parents, the neighbor, the, the government, the boss, whatever it is, if we're looking externally to get our needs met and our wants fulfilled, well, what we've done is we've handed over a lot of power. And when those things don't happen, and invariably they don't happen, government disappoints us all the time. Um, bosses don't always, you know, give us what we, what we think we deserve in forms of salary or, or benefits or whatever. Um, neighbors, friends, family members, the television, they don't always fulfill our, our needs and our wishes. What we want to do is we want to look internally and say, I can tolerate no matter what comes. Even if I don't get what I want, I'm going to be okay. And that's why I do a lot of the emotional functioning stuff. If you can ride the wave through to the crest, down the other side, and know that you're going to be okay just because you had an emotional experience, your, your life isn't over. You're going to be okay. Then you can do that over and over again. That also keeps us humble. Now, humility is not to be confused with um, being stepped on or walked on or taken advantage of in a, in a nefarious way. Being humble simply means that you know your limits and you're willing to expand them by being open to new feedback. Some of that new feedback comes in the form of being told no. So through this distress, we grow. And through growth, we can model to other people that it's possible, that we don't have to throw fits just because things don't go the way that we want them to. So I'm trying to align my expectations. I'm trying to uh, teach my kids to align their expectations with what actual reality 
presents, not with what we, we think reality should be or what we've mentally projected onto reality. And reality, you know, can take the form of many things, like I said, school or, or girlfriends or boyfriends or um, the, the media or, or the, the performance of this computer, for example. Um, <clears throat> I need to align my expectations with reality, know that sometimes things aren't going to go well, most of the time, things aren't going to go the, the way that we want it to, and then learn to push through. Because ultimately, as adults, we're modeling that for our children. If we want healthy, fulfilled, balanced, humble children, then we're going to want to do that ourselves. And if we can't do it ourselves, well, there's a lot of people looking at us wondering how to navigate life. If we show them how to navigate life in appropriate ways that are full of gratitude and humility and deference and also strong leadership, you know, well anchored in, in a belief system of some sort, we can tolerate all sorts of things. So we'll see what happens with this, uh, this endeavor of mine, putting out a, a piece of content every week for a year. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did like it, share it around, sub- smash that subscribe button as the, uh, as the content creators say, and, uh, I wish you all great mental wellness. Take care.